off season. The waiting continues. A sports loving nation denied for a few more weeks at least. But all is not lost. Away from the ice, they're all revved up and raring to go. Hello and welcome to round eight of the World Rally Championship. The self-styled Gravel Grand Prix. Fast, furious, or as they say in these parts, flat out. It's Rally Finland, oozing history and heritage. One of the classics. Carl is uh, flying and dancing, it's like a roller coaster, you know, like, like very good music when you're listening, very good music, classical music, it's like that. But it's all gone flat recently. The Finns used to dominate their home events no longer. Now they're on a mission to reclaim lost ground and pride in front of thousands of rally mad locals. I've been trying to repair well for the rally and uh, not to, to take pressure. And I know that um, this rally is important for the Finns. The very best of Rally Finland coming up. We've every angle covered as usual, including behind the scenes as we spend the weekend in the company of the WRC's leading privateer, introducing Team Prokop. Everybody have to do everything. Like my physio, he is sometimes working on the car and he is helping in the kitchen. The WRC returned from its mid-season break with the super high-speed forest tracks of Finland. Round 8 of 13, a final chance perhaps for Yari Matti Lapla to take the fight to VW teammate Sebastian Auger in the battle for the championship. And here's why Auger's maximum return last time out in Poland means he's now fully 50 points clear of Lapla. Andreas Mikkelsen completing a VW 1-2-3 ahead of fellow Norwegian Mads Osberg in the Citroen. And that all converts to a healthy lead for Volkswagen in the Manufacturers' Championship. 147 points ahead of the team they succeeded as champions last season, Citroën. Finland is one of the highlights of the season. Thousands flocking to its traditional home in Yvaskula. Three-hour drive north of Helsinki. The event spread over four days, 26 stages, 360 competitive kilometres. And the return of a number of classics not featured for several years. Well, they've been racing through these forests for more than half a century now. So just how do you tackle the famous high-speed roller coaster tracks of Finland? You have to pick up the lines. You need to be really careful with the lines here because you're carrying 120 kilometers per hour average speed on the on the stages between the trees and and the, going over the jumps. So, I mean, it's a great feeling to drive such fast, but also you need to be really focused all the time. And you need to plan a lot, a lot more than you do on other rallies, because uh, you need to, to make sure you're in the right position of the road when you when you enter a crest and also when you are landing to, to enter another corner. So it's a it's a big big challenge. You have to be uh, very committed from the start, trying uh, from the very first corner to go as fast as possible, find the right rhythm, and then uh, try to be kind with the car, try to be smooth and picking up the right line because this is the most important. Every small uh, error on the line and you, you easily go far, wide and uh, up into the ditches and into the forest. And here's what lies ahead on day one then. Four opening stages, including the return of Haigu, legendary blast through Yavaskula's streets. First though, it is one of the classics in the company of Paul King. And as if to prelude the thunderous battle to come, the heavens opened above Evascular. Stage one, the famous Lankamar test, a wet and wild start to the event. And first to test himself on these sodden, slippery gravel roads, current championship leader Sebastian Ogier. On the famous Latamutka corner in stage two, the first wake up call. Latamutka literally means barn corner in Finnish and has caught out some of the finest drivers over the years. But hoping to put a metaphorical barn door between himself and the world champion, that man, Yari Matti Latvala. 
The Finn has experienced that magical feeling of winning on home soil four years ago. BW's flying Finn, desperate to bring a victory back to his homeland. And with the opening two stage wins in the rain, he was on the right track. Chris Meek's gung-ho approach to his first WRC outing in Finland last year may have ended in a final stage crash, but ironically enough, was eye-catching enough to help the Brits secure this full programme with Citroen in 2014. The Northern Irishman loves these stages. There is nowhere the man from Dungannon would rather be, and it shows second quickest in the opening test. Only once in the following three that follow is Meek outside the top three times. Yeah, really quite happy. The rain before the start of the stage was something else. We couldn't even see the road section, but luckily it cleared for the stage. Obviously, any advantage we get the road position was totally taken away with this rain, but uh, what an incredible place to drive a rally car. Fantastic. Well, there's a man who's loving his job, Chris Meek, running third after Thursday's four opening stages. Yari Matti Lapla off to a very promising start, leading teammate Sebastian Ogier by four and a half seconds. Mickelson ahead of compatriot Osberg. Robert Kubica splitting Thierry Neville and Hayden Padden. Just outside the top ten, in 11th, Czech driver Martin Prokop, following the WRC's long tradition of privateers, with his Jippo Car World Rally Team, self-financed underdogs trying to compete with the major manufacturers and offering us some fascinating insight into life behind the scenes of a WRC team. Hello, uh, we are on the pre-event test uh, close to EMSA. It's Sunday, it's very hot weather. Uh, we are trying to find a setup for fast rolls and uh, get used to the really high speed uh, on the stages. Uh, let's see what, what we will find. Free rally test the start of a long week for Martin and the Jippo Car team. A tight knit group compared to the major manufacturers, but what they lack in size is more than made up for by team spirit. So I will introduce you with my small private team. Uh, I think it's good to see the, the compare between my team and the, the Hyundai. How oh, it's a difference between the, the huge, how, how we are small. What is the biggest difference on the, the private team is that everybody have to do everything. So, uh, like my physio, he is sometimes working on the car, he's helping the guys, he's cleaning the car. Then he's working on the me and he's helping in the kitchen. So like you see that he is he's cleaning the, the service now, it's the physio. So this is the one of the most important places in, in the team because uh, this is the kitchen and there is a chef Libor and he has a really difficult job because he has to make two cuisines, one for me and one for the guys to keep their bellies on the same condition. I mean the big one. So this is the oldest part of, uh, of the team. It's uh, the team track and I built it uh, on the junior's time. It was built in 2005 and it's still the same. So we have the, the stock for, uh, for a car and we made just small changes for the bigger car, but uh, it's still the same all the time. And this is the most important place of uh, the team. This is the team office. Here sitting my engineer and my team manager, and they are trying to find the best setup and best information, and, and they are making the strategy for the race. So I hope that they found a good strategy and good setup for uh, the rally Finland. Let's find out, shall we? Putting that setup to the test in Thursday's opening stages. Prokop struggling early on to find the balance between pushing hard and making sure he stays out of trouble. Just outside the top ten, plenty of room for improvement. It's really difficult because you can feel the grip and you, you feel that you can push a lot, but sometimes it slips like hell and then you are very wide, but I try to save the car on a clean road and a clean line and try to keep the speed. And we should be following Martin Prokop's progress closely as Rally Finland unfolds. Sure to be full of high-speed drama and intrigue as ever. One of the locals is certainly having a smashing time. 
wonderful story of how Juho Hannanen recovered from a spectacular high-speed crash in just a moment. It's the annual pilgrimage for rally fans far and wide. All roads leading to Finland, where Yari Matti Latvala has made a promising start to his home rally. Overnight leader going into the first full day of action. Day two, a real test of skill, speed and endurance. 134 competitive kilometres, a further 429 on the road sections between stages. And we have a frustrated world champion on road sweeping duties. Sebastian Auger is first away. He's not happy about it, but that's the price for leading the championship. And with new stages here on Friday morning, Auger's task of chasing down local favourite Latvala that much more challenging as he blasts off into the great unknown. Just four and a half seconds, the deficit to Latvala as we take a look at the Pielakovsky stage for the first time. Up to 200 kilometers an hour through the Finnish forest. This is why the event has been called the Grand Prix on gravel. Auger has stated that win here last year. It was the greatest moment of his career to date, but he's still hungry for more. Latvala, beware. After spending much of last season hanging on his teammates' coattails, in Argentina recently, Latvala proved he can beat the outrageously talented Auger in a straight fight. Make no mistake, this is a fired up fin. Oh, big slide there, almost off the road, but that shouldn't deter Yari Matti in this sort of mood. And after a number of frustrating setbacks in last year's Finland rally, concentration is key. And some advice from Finnish legendary Vatanen might help as well. Yari, some words for Mary there. It's a great stage time to start the day. Are you happy? Yeah, happy. We had a moment on the, on the left hand and we were quite a long time on the ditch, to be honest. Luckily, there was no rocks or anything, so I stayed calm, but my, because it was on the very first stage in the rally which we wrecked, I had a note that it didn't have that it tightens and it tightens, so that was the reason that uh, basically I got a little bit of uh, pressure on the heart, but no worries afterwards. After a frustrating outing at his home event in Poland recently, Robert Kubica is experiencing the top level of rallying on the greatest arena of them all for the first time. And after that, Kubitz is not likely to forget his first experience in a hurry. Yet another incident in the poll's long and rather public learning process in 2014. A uh, very fast left-hander, six gear. The thing is that I was driving on the page notes and uh, I did mistake on Reki. Uh, I didn't uh, notice that uh, this uh, crest could uh, unload the car and uh, yeah, uh, we lost the line and uh, that's how it is. Thierry Neuville, the standout performer for Hyundai this season with two podium finishes already for the Korean manufacturer and recent engine upgrades on the i20 should serve him well on Finland's searingly quick roads. But the Belgian bullet, another to cross that fine line between the limit and the forest. A big impact on the rear of the car. Neville off the line and off the road. And the damage that whack at the rear has caused is immediately clear at the stage end. Siri, the rear spoiler's, uh, well, hardly there. Bits of it missing and a dent in the rear. What happened? I went slightly wide on a, on a slippy braking for a very tight corner. And uh, I hit something with the rear, but... Uh, the car is still driving OK, so we are fine. It's not only Lavala who's ensured the home fires are burning brightly. A fine turn of speed from Juho Hannanen has seen him climb to fourth. <laughs> that upward momentum, though, would be short-lived. Filmed by a nearby fan, it's the sort of incident we witness time and again in the Finnish forests. And while on this occasion it appears Hannanen will be able to continue with a little bit of help from his friends, frustrating mistake doesn't get much better on a second viewing Hannanen's battered and bruised i20 is in need of serious attention at the end of the stage you heard what happened ah uh, from the start we used case after start we had a slow puncture and then uh, afterwards you know one place 
missed the breaking point and and uh, and hit to the bank and then re backside to the ditch and small roll over there. Is the car okay? Do you think? Uh, you can look it by yourself. I don't know. It's not completely okay. Is the wheels pointing the right direction? Most of them. So you ho at least able to see the funny side, but with two stages still to run on this loop, Hannanen and co-driver Tommy Tuominen getting to work on that smashed windscreen. If all else fails, kicking it out will have to suffice. Andreas Mikkelsen was battling at the front throughout a scintillating performance last time out in Poland. But joining his teammates in their breathtaking battle on Finland's terrifying roads has proved a step too far for the young Norwegian. Mikkelsen is up to fifth place by stage seven and having to push hard with his compatriot Mads Osberg just seconds behind him. And a chance now to enjoy the Volkswagen Polo R's charge from above through the flat out corners of Kakaristo, which features sections of the legendary Olympoia test. <laughs> Chris Meek, meanwhile, is in the form of his life. Over crest 120, go left for line, flat six to the right, and keep straight for left over crest, jump 150. The Brits may have had a roller coaster year of highs and lows, but at the moment, Finland 2014 could mark one of the highlights of his career to date. And this first pass through Kakaristo is another landmark. It is a first stage win on Finnish soil for the Northern Irishman. A real tricky section, the new part, the first five kilometres. Then we turn out onto the original Onamboya, and it's incredible. When you have the knowledge base from the year before, it makes it so much more enjoyable. And uh, yeah, um, to be honest, this stage is the first stage in the rally that probably has been proper road cleaning. So the guys at front were surely at a disadvantage, but uh, hey, I'm happy. Meek was even quicker than Finland's finest Yari Matti Latvala, a huge achievement in itself considering the Volkswagen star's blistering form. Latvala's focus, though, is very much on keeping his teammate at arm's length. Ogier is slightly faster in stage eight, but the nine-tenths of a second dropped won't unduly concern the rally leader. And what of Juho Hannanen in his now excessively air-conditioned Hyundai i20? Well, it's certainly proving a refreshing pass through stages seven and eight, while a loosening dashboard is providing further distraction and forcing more improvisation from Tommy to Omenen. It has been a frustrating setback for the Finnish crew, but still an impressive exercise in damage limitation. Juho Hannanen losing his windscreen and his place on the leaderboard, where Yari Matti Latvala's advantage equates to roughly a second of stage, 8.4 ahead of Ogier and an informed Chris Meek. Mads Osberg up to sixth after Hannanen's dramas. Hyundai's challenge now led by New Zealand's Hayden Patton. He's seventh. Well, back in Uvascular, the Hyundai team are in for a busy time as their cars, or what's left of them, return to service. It was not about the bad luck, I just came too fast and, and I rolled over there and uh, the main problem, I broke the windscreen, so that's why it was quite difficult to drive afterwards. But the rest of the car is fine? Yeah, the rest of the car, it's, it was just that shame that I broke it, with, with broke the windscreen because then it was very difficult to see, but otherwise car is, car is not that bad. So Hannanen should soon be back at full speed, but things are about to go from bad to worse for his teammate, Thierry Neuville. Hyundai team boss Michel Nandon arrives to inspect the damage caused by that collision with the tree. It doesn't appear too bad. There's the impact. But the FIA delegate is concerned about the damage to the roll cage. And he goes on to rule Neville is unable to continue on safety grounds. The Belgian then out of Rally Finland as we head into the afternoon. And more problems coming up now, this time for another Finn. Mikko Hirvonen looking to fight back after slipping further adrift of Chris Meek in the fight for the final podium place. After losing even more ground in stage nine, worse was to follow. Mm -hmm. 
A costly spin for Yavaskal own. Not only does the last time see him lose more ground to Meek, Hirvonen also slips behind Mads Osberg on the leaderboard. It had been a frustrating event in many ways for Osberg. The Citroen man plagued with setup issues earlier in the rally. But the Norwegian now clearly moving in the right direction, ahead of Hirvonen and consolidating his advantage. A second fastest time in stage 12, the highlight of the Friday afternoon loop. Chris Meek, meanwhile, continues to go from strength to strength. With Hirvonen's challenge falling away, a pair of second fastest times have Whisper It begun to pile the pressure on the second place of championship leader, Sebastian Ogier. As Meek mentioned earlier, though, his slight road order advantage and clearer line of grip compared to the two drivers ahead is beginning to pay dividends on the now bone-dry roads. Ogier, in contrast, as the first car in, has been finding the surface increasingly slippery. Not only is Ogier losing ground to the rally leader to rub insult to injury in stage 11, the world champion also slips behind Meek, and he is not impressed. Are you now looking at second place or still trying to put pressure on Yari Martin? Still a long way to go. Tomorrow will be definitely the start of another rally for me. Because you're not first on the road. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think, I think it's nice. I should stay all the time first on the road. FIA love it, so just, we should just open all the time. <laughs> if Ogier is frustrated, then his teammate is thriving. <laughs> With scratch times for three stages in a row, Yari Mati Lavala is beginning to pull away from his closest rivals, and the tantalizing possibility of a second home victory is looking increasingly achievable. And on the subject of his teammates' road sweeping woes, Lavala is less than sympathetic. Yeah, I mean, we just spoke to Seb there, and he's made it quite clear that he's losing time because of his first on the road, but that is an inspired pace. I mean, do you believe what Oje is saying, or are you absolutely on the ragged edge? OK, some places, for sure, he is losing, but uh, but also it can be mentally that if you, if you think about it, that you lose because you're first on the road, then you lose even more. The mind game's well and truly underway then. Ogier frustrated at being first on the road. Lavala adamant hits his speed that's putting him in front. That inter-team squabble likely to get even more interesting as the rally unfolds. The VW pair still separated by Chris Meek. Mickelson, Osberg and over to Paige Herbenen all very close in that battle for fourth. And Hannanen back onto the leaderboard in ninth. OK, now earlier in the show we met Czech driver Martin Prokop and his Jibbo car WRC privateer team, self-financed, up against the big spending manufacturers. But Prokop has consistently produced point-scoring performances in the championship, and he had been enjoying another strong outing here in Finland until stage 11. A rare mistake, and Prokop, like Kibitza, Neville and Hananen, succumbing to a slight error, all very typical of Finland. So, Prokop's Fiesta is returned to the Jibbo car service area, where it promises to be a long night for his mechanics. First job, though, to review the extent of the damage. After an off like that, the FIA will insist on checking key safety elements such as a roll cage before deciding, as with Thierry Neuville earlier, if the car is safe enough to rejoin. It's frustrating because it was so clean stage and it was a very good drive. And here you can see it was, it was a mistake, but just a small one. And with small luck, we can get back on the road, but luckily nothing happened to us and the car is uh, possible to repair. So, yeah, really frustrating. But will the FIA delegates allow Prokop's Fiesta to continue? For me, it's OK, the safety. Yeah. It's up to you. It's good news. It's good that the road catch is OK for us, so we will try to fix it. We start to strip the car and we will try to put back the cross member. 
see if the mountings will fit somehow. And if this is okay, then we have to start welding and repairing the body shell. Well, we hope to start at 11.30 and then we have three hours. And the car must be later in park for me at three o'clock, so let's see. So it's now a race against time for the Jippo car mechanics, but it's not long before they realize there's just too much damage to continue. Their rally is over. Now we tried to fix the, the damaged parts on the car, but we had to decide to retire from the event because the damage was too big. So we rather prepare now the car proper for Germany, and that's the decision. An unfortunate and premature end to Rally Finland for Martin Prokop and his Jeepo car team. But they'll be back to take on the big boys again next time out in Germany. Right now, there's a real battle shaping up in the race for the top step of the podium. Yari Matti Latvala leads at the halfway stage of his home rally, but the fight to the finish in Finland is about to get very feisty. Vascular, capital of central Finland, synonymous with world motorsport as the traditional home of one of the most famous rallies of them all. It's a vibrant university city, students accounting for around a quarter of the population of 135,000. It's also a hub for technological and internet-based businesses, including the modern Pavilionki Congress Center where the WRC service park is based. Vascular also in the heart of the Finnish Lakeland providing another spectacular setting for the WRC's global tour. Saturday, the midpoint of Rally Finland, Yari Matti Latvala carrying the hopes of a nation, leading his home event. Ten more stages today, two loops of five, either side of a midday service. And we start with another Finnish favourite, Mokki Pera. And the Mokipera stage is a well-known name to Rally Finland, but this is a fascinating new challenge with the flowing 14 kilometers run in reverse to previous years. The second half of this new look stage is quite simply breathtaking. A classic roller coaster of a stage as we join championship leader Sebastian Ogier. The Frenchman was an increasingly frustrated man the previous afternoon, angry with his road position disadvantage. But with the positions now reversed, that is no longer an issue. And his first target is the Citroen of Chris Meek, having just slipped behind the Northern Irishman on the leaderboard. Oh, a bit wide there. Ogier beginning the day, just one and a half seconds behind Meek. This has been one of the drives of the Northern Irishman's career to date. But fighting the world champion for position on some of the most terrifying stages on the calendar will not be a priority. A podium finish in Finland would do very nicely. A bone-shaking ride over the crest towards the finish here, bouncing on the limits of the Citroen suspension. Keep left to the finish. 80 for tight six right over crest. Just seven tenths of a second are conceded to Ogier in this first pass through Mocky Pera. Out front, meanwhile, Yari Matti Latvala continues to reign supreme. Six years ago, Yari came unstuck on this road and run in the opposite direction, flashing past the ditch where he ended up and the rock by the farm that smashed his suspension here it must feel like a distant memory on an event he's so far controlled from the very first stage by now in full flow on the stunning undulating roads of his homeland and loving every minute it is yet another stage win for the rally leader so Yari Matti Latvala remains in control. Tremendous scrap behind him, less than a second between Meek and Ogier. Mickelson leading the fight for fourth, just ahead of Osberg and Hervenen. More than a minute in turn ahead of the chasing pack. But it's Yari Matti who continues to carry the hopes of a nation, desperate to restore national pride. Rally Finland used to be dominated by the locals with the likes of Marco Alain, Hanno Mikola and Tommy Mackinnon, virtually unbeatable on home soil. Things have changed. Despite their best efforts, it's been four years since we had a home winner. And last year, for the first time in the rally's history, there were no Finns at all on the podium. So the pressure is on this man, Yari Matti Latvala, to stop the rot. Finnish pride is at stake. I have heard it from many people, and, but I've been trying to repair well for the rally and uh, not to, to take pressure, and I know that um, this rally is important for the Finns, 
And if I can't win, I hope the Finn to win this rally because the people want to see their home on home ground their drivers to do well. It's the same in France, you know, for sure they want the French drivers to do well and if they are not doing well, of course it's affecting for the for the interest. In, in, it's easy in every sport. Tell me whether you do, Yanni Matti, have any advantage being a Finn in Finland or whether now, you know, technology, the internet, film technology means anybody from around the world can come here and win and beat you. Back in the 70s, 80s and 90s, I think Finnish drivers had an advantage. You could practice these roads so much as you wanted. And it was difficult for the for the foreigners come because Finnish drivers are already practicing the roads and also having the experience from home home ground. But then the regulation changed on the rally sport that you can only uh, see the stages twice before the rally. Then uh, more on boards on the internet. The cars have come easier to drive. Not like in uh, let's say still in the 80s 90s that you had to attack hard and be a lot of sideways doing the Scandinavian flicks. There is nothing so much secret anymore here here in Finland. I think there was a bit of people, were rally drivers were afraid of this rally because it's such a high speed over the jumps and so on in, in the past. And the Finnish is very, very strong. But with these cars, their cars are so good, jumping so well, so you don't get so big surprises anymore on the jumps with these cars nowadays. So it's easier to approach this rally. Yari Matti Latvala there. A reminder, he leads here in Finland, more than 20 seconds ahead of Citroën's Chris Meek and Volkswagen teammate Sebastian Auger as we rejoin the action now. So with Latvala well in control at the front, let's get back to the battle of the non-Fins for second in the spectator-friendly Himos now. It might be short, but as Chris Meek's about to find out, it can pack quite a punch. In all my the slow 100 makes that big container now with that dip and bump and take that 180 crest jump and slow down four right, down four right, down four right. The big cut tight to the late in the slow crest. The look on Chris's face says it all. That was a very, very close call. Over the Northern Irishman's lightning quick reflexes, saving the day there. So Meek living life on the edge, and he also slips back behind Ogier to third in the morning loop. The Northern Irishman scare, a reminder that while the leading trio may be well ahead of the chasing pack, Rally Finland, as we see every year, can bite in an instant. Ogier over the Liesto launch pad there. Polo R as graceful in the air as it is on the dirt. The finish jumps, one of the greatest spectacles in world motorsport, and it has been another stirring performance from Auger on Saturday morning. But could he trouble the rally leader? It's still advantage Andreas Mickelson in the fight for fourth, meanwhile. Again, the Norwegian was able to manage his pace to match that of Hirvonen and Osbergs. Mikkelsen shuts the door firmly again throughout the morning loop. So try as he might, Mads Osberg just can't quite find the pace to match his compatriot. Felt like a really heavy impact after the crest. The Citroen DS3 crunching into the ground. Was that a rock on the right side of the road as well? It's worth another look. Yeah, clearly a sizable rock to the right there. The stage is cleared, but has any lasting damage been done? Mads, Mikko's a bit frustrated. He hasn't been able to take any time out of you or Andreas. Are you frustrated? You haven't been able to catch Andreas, or are you still happy? Oh, it to be honest, it's not so much more to do. Uh, it's just, like I've said earlier, to get those small, small things together. And it felt like we did on this one, but then we hit a big rock in, uh, in the straight line. I didn't see it, and we just hit it, so I was sure we had a puncture. And at the, at the end, then, it was lucky it was not a puncture, because the impact was massive. Frustration for Osberg then, but the local fans will be delighted to see their compatriot, Yari Mati Latvala, leading the way out front. We've just heard how important a home win would be for the Finns, and it is, so far, so good for Yari. We do have some of the most spectacular roads of his home event to come on this third day. 
The secret to finish success might be gone, but the passion for a local win is proving a potent inspiration. Latvala wins four out of five stages on Saturday morning to further extend his advantage. So after the morning loop, Latvala's lead edging closer to the magic half minute mark. So far, so good for the Finn. Chris Meek is now 13 and a half behind Sebastian Auger. And confirmation that Hugh Hannanen's fight back has begun. He's up to eighth at the expense of Elvin Evans. Back to your vascular and midday service and concern at Citroen. And bad news for Mads Osberg. It's the end of the road for the Norwegian. On the last stage uh, this morning, Mats uh, Osberg, after a jump, he hit uh, probably a rock. We don't know exactly what uh, what it was, but uh, he felt a very strong uh, impact from the lower side of the of the car. And uh, he's during the service, uh, we saw that unfortunately a part of the roll cage, uh, which is the, the upper and the front of uh, of the car, uh, was bended. So it's not possible to to continue the, the rally. A disappointed Mads Osberg forced to retire yet again this season. Meanwhile, back to the battle, out in front, all eyes on Yari Mati Latvala. A repeat of this morning would do very nicely, thank you, as we rejoin the Finn now in the second pass through Yuko Yari. And just when it seemed a strange calm had descended over the fight at the front, Rally Finland's unerring ability to surprise returns with Yari Mati Latvala seemingly untouchable out front. Suddenly, disaster strikes. Like Osberg earlier in the day, a rogue rock on the racing line is the cause. Latvala has immediate brake problems. And his teammate can smell blood. With Latvala's issue instantly reflected in the split times being received inside Ogier's car, the world champion can sense his opportunity and attacks. From frustration emerges sudden hope, and this rally could be blown wide open. Ogier sets a benchmark of 10 minutes, 9.4 seconds. Latvala would be mighty relieved he'd built up that healthy lead of half a minute. 31 seconds, the gap between the two at the start of this stage. But with that brake issue holding him back, Yari is already losing time. It's a high emergency case of damage limitation in stage 20. The seconds are slipping away. Eleven seconds dropped in one stage alone. The overall gap is slashed to 20.1. We don't have front right caliper in the use at the moment. We have only three brakes. We managed to fix some of the things, but not completely. So we are driving with the problem at the moment. And uh, I can tell you that it's very, very hard. And those brake problems would go on to prove very costly. His lead over Ogier slashed from half a minute to a slender 3.4 seconds by the end of the day. Chris Meek still on course for a podium. Elsewhere, Kiwi Hayden Padden is up to six ahead of Hyundai teammate Juho Hannanen with Welshman Elvin Evans eighth for M Sport. So it's all going to come down to one final shootout between the VW pair. Teammates and rivals. Right now, big rivals. You will never see me going crazy for a victory when I have a championship to win. So, of course, I'm going to try. I'm happy because this afternoon I find back some better feeling. And it's possible, but still, he, he got the advantage. He's still in the front. He's still with three seconds. Looks not so much, but he is, it's hard to take. I got the finish sisu and I decided that I'm not giving up. I will drive as much as I can and I take risks to, to try to hold the lead. We managed to hold the lead, but OK, we have lost 27 seconds, but still in the lead. It's all on a knife edge then, going into the final day. Can Yari Mati Latvala retain his composure once those brakes are fixed and keep the world champion at bay? We are in for a thrilling finale here in Finland and it's coming right up. The scene is set in the forests of Finland. Yari Mati Latvala, the local hero, 
head to head with teammate Sebastian Auger, the imposter, winner here last year. It's time for the Finns to fight back, but it could hardly be closer. I think it's thrilling for everybody, but uh, you know, working with these guys and especially send them out this morning is, I think, is, is very thrilling, isn't it? So you have to, you, you don't want anybody to win for those two, or all to win, but they have to fight it out on the stages. What did you tell Jari? He said, if he drives like he's driven all weekend, this is enough. Simple as that. Or will it be as we head into the final day of Rally Finland? Just three stages to come, starting and ending with the spectacular roller coaster ride of Ruhimaki with the 23 kilometers of Mohimpa in between. Confirmation then that after three days and more than 25 kilometers, there's just 3.4 seconds separating Lapla and Ogier as we rejoin Paul. So to Ruimaki then, just seven kilometers long, but featuring this breathtaking sequence of jumps and a headline act on the final morning, a showpiece head-to-head -head battle for the rally victory between the two Volkswagens. That brake problem for Latvala the previous afternoon has given Ogier a golden opportunity, just 3.4 seconds the gap to the leader. Roger into the flying finish and 3 minutes 18.3 seconds is the benchmark for Latvala to chase. The Finn will of course have been frustrated to see his half a minute lead evaporate before his eyes the previous day, but there is nothing to do now but dust himself down and do it all again. The fight in Finland is back on Latvala, desperate to secure a first home win for his nation for four years. Nothing to keep the Polo R on the loose gravel, but the nerve and reflexes of the 29-year-old. Now let's watch the clock. And what a response that is. Yari 1.6 seconds quicker. His overall lead stretched out to five. Confirmation there of Latvala's slight improvement out front, but the next stage is crucial. The longest of the final day, this is the fast-flowing Crestfield pass through Myhimpa. Juho Hannan had made a strong start to his home event until he rolled out dramatically on Friday morning, but we have witnessed an admirable response over the following two days. The local star showing impressive pace again on this final day, and with his teammate Hayden Patton suffering with power steering problems, there is an opportunity for more upward momentum on the leaderboard. So Patton has been hit with a final day power steering failure. So frustrating to experience mechanical problems so late in the rally. And it's in this longer My Himpa test where it's really going to hurt. The Kiwi has 23 kilometers to manhandle the I-20 through these constant corners. And you can see he's suffering. Best of two minutes are lost and Patton plummets to eighth. Back, though, to that enthralling fight at the front with Sebastian Auger and Julian and Gracia already well on their way into this penultimate test. They lost out on the first stage of the day, remember, but the gap still stands at just five seconds. The 23 kilometers of my Himpa represents Auger's best and perhaps last opportunity to make any significant gains. Auger has done all he can. It's over to Latvala for the response. Yari Mati admitted he was right on the ragged edge in that opening stage in the morning. It proved effective in Ruhimaki, but through the slightly more technical Mai Himpa, Ogier's cleaner approach did look strong. The clock is up, five seconds the gap before the stage, remember. Ogier has set that target of 10 minutes, 15.5 seconds. And there's not going to be much in this. No, he is slower. Another late twist. It's Ogier with the stage win, and the gap is back to just 3.7 seconds. So Ogier strikes back in the fight out in front. This one is going right down to the wire. Chris Meek remains third, with Andres Mikkelsen still fourth for VW. Further back, the unfortunate Craig Breen doesn't appear on the leaderboard after heading off to hospital with an injured back. Hayden Padden slipping to eighth with his power steering problems. Here we go then, the final showdown, the power stage. 6.7 kilometers that will decide the outcome of a thrilling Rally Finland. And here's fifth place, Mikko Hirvonen. 
One last push here from the Finn and co-driver Yamo Leighton, and they could represent an outside bet for the Power Stage win on home soil. The M Sport man is fastest through so far, and he secures at least fifth place overall. Throughout this weekend, though, Volkswagen's talented young Norwegian Andreas Mikkelsen has been just that little bit quicker than the experienced Finn. And it's a similar story in this final test. A rapid run through Ruimaki's roller coaster, seven kilometers. Fourth place overall for Mikkelsen, and he pips Hirvonen by 1.4 seconds to take over the power stage top spot. It was only one year ago that Chris Meek took on the Finnish Forest in a World Rally car for the first time. So for the Northern Irishman to be on course for a podium finish just a year later is quite some effort. The stringly quick route through Ruimaki is a stunning finale and Meek is flying. The Citroen star is also slightly faster than Mickelson and that marks the third podium finish of the season. Now, though, for the main event, with just 3.7 seconds between the leading pair, we have a final stage showdown. First up, representing France, it is world champion Sebastian Ogier. That stage win in the previous test has given Seb a fighting chance to go for this win. Incredible stuff from Ogier, his foot hard to the floor as he attacks on to the finish. And that is a stunning time, 2.1 seconds quicker than anyone else in less than seven kilometers. That's going to take some beating. Tension, as you'd expect, for the VW team at the service park in Yavascula. So it's down to Latvala now. These will surely be nerve-wracking moments for the Finn. His compatriots willing him on every step of the way alongside the stage, but this is all down to the skill of Yari now. trick of French victories in recent years has hurt and if anything Latvala's setback the previous day has made him even more determined huge jumps towards the finish 3.7 seconds is Latvala's lead remember one error and this could all be over but there is no sign of a slip up this should surely be enough to secure his second home victory, but can he match Ogier's time in the power stage? Well, not quite, just a tenth of a second slower, but that won't bother Yari. This is a stunning result. It's a second victory on home soil for Yari. A terrific response back at Volkswagen HQ. And just look how much that means to Latvala and co-driver Mika Antila. Confirmation there of yet another power stage win for Ogier. Meek gets a point for third, but it's two bonus points for an emotional rally Finland victor. It was a really, really hard job to get this victory. I can tell I had a fantastic feeling with the driving from the beginning of the rally. Everything went really, really well. Then until when we got the problems, which really put us in a difficult position. And I was almost, almost losing it. It was so close that I was losing the whole victory. But luckily we fight back. We really fight back with the Sisu like in the, like in the Finnish guy soldiers in the, back in the winter war in, in the 40s. Larry Matty delighted. His third win of the season, standing firm under pressure for that precious home victory. Just 3.6 seconds ahead of OJ. Great drive from Chris Meek in third. Strong recovery from Hannanen claiming six ahead of Elvin Evans. One of two very happy British drivers come the end of Rad Finland. The nature of this podium is, you know, outweighs the Monte and Argentina one because I was able to fight from the front from the very start. And uh, yeah, really, really happy to be on the pace this weekend. And OK, we've still a few percent to find to the top guys, but uh, I'm sure as time goes by, we'll, we'll keep searching and we'll keep finding more. It's been a great race, great hand uh, this morning. We had so much fun in the stages. There was nothing to do. We just drive close to the limit. I mean, uh, in the weekend, I never found uh, to switch my mode in the full attack mode like Yari was this weekend. And he was really doing a great job. So he did have his... Uh, his victory and um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. It's a one-two for the team, so it's uh, it's great. And at least I'm happy to don't destroy the finished uh, party tonight. 
All in all, then, a very satisfactory result all round, certainly for Volkswagen, but no one quite as happy as that man. The Finn, finishing first in Finland. I think he was never focused really like this. Huh? He was was absolutely unbelievable all weekend, and he was so confident and and the special pressure in his home rally that added to it, he did a fantastic job. Confirmation then, second and the power stage win means Ogier still holds a commanding lead in the drivers' championship, 44 points ahead now of Latvala. Chris Meek's podium means he jumps ahead of Thierry Neuville into six. Evans, Prokop, and Solberg completed the top ten. And in the manufacturers, a third maximum of the season puts Volkswagen a massive 175 points ahead of Citroën. They could claim the title at the next round in Germany. But right here and right now, the moment belongs to the Finns. Yari Matti Latvala restoring some long lost pride. We shall leave them to enjoy the champagne. It's been a fantastic rally for England. From Paul King and myself, Kevin Piper, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.